you are ruining your child's vacation to Walt Disney World? Stop it. Hey, this is Laura with the Disney Slowdown. Today, we're going to talk about avoiding the meltdowns. I cannot believe some of the posts that I have read and seen in the Disney groups. Absolutely can't believe it. Now, as a special needs mom, you and I both know that meltdowns are just a part of life. Like, that's just what we do. It happens on the daily. Then you throw in the extra stimulation of Disney World and the heat and the crowds. And it's, it's inevitable. But the post that I saw that prompted this video was... 100% avoidable. We will talk about that at the end of the video. First, I have a huge surprise for you and I'm so excited. I am going to do a series and I don't know if I'm going to do a second video a week. I don't know if I could pull that off, although the kids are getting ready to go back to school. But my mom has actually never been to Disney World. I thought she had been. I thought she and my dad went when we were young and they left us with my grandparents. But they went to Miami. They actually did not go to Orlando. They did not go to Walt Disney World like I thought they had all of these years. I thought they had been. So my mom has never been to Disney and I've decided I'm taking her. And I think we're going to book an extended trip right around my birthday, which is in December. And I'm going to start with the spreadsheet that I've, you know, I've offered here for you to use and probably need some updates because I think we've added some more characters that I haven't added. <laughs> but I'm excited to start planning our trip in December. And you get to help me. I think what happened is they brought us back. Like those Mickey suckers, you know, those big lollipops with Mickey's face on them, which in Florida, you can get those everywhere. My parents probably picked it up at the airport and then brought it home. And my, I don't know, seven or eight year old self thought they went to Disney World. I knew of Walt Disney World. I knew of Mickey Mouse. I knew of Walt Disney. We used to watch the shows on Sunday nights, I think it was. The Wonderful World of Disney. Do you remember those? Are you old enough to remember those? Tell me in the comments if you remember The Wonderful World of Disney and The Wild World of Disney. We watched both of those. So now, back to the major meltdowns. I have two major ways that you can actually ruin your own trip, your child's vacation to Disney. Major way that you're ruining your own vacation and definitely your kid's vacation at Walt Disney World is you're pushing it too hard. Routines are off. You're up early. You want to get there for rope drop. You want to stay completely through to the very end until the last firework shoots off. And then maybe you want to take your time getting out of the parks. Maybe ride a few more rides because the park might still be open. Or you just want to get some good pictures when there's not a lot of crowds. Your, your children cannot handle that routine. <laughs> if you do have kids that can handle that routine, that's great. But you got to know where your boundaries are for your kids. I have one child, my 16-year-old who we can get up at five o'clock in the morning and we can get out the door quickly and we can go all day and we can take little breaks. My other two kids, we can try to do that, but it's still stressful and it's still probably going to end in some major meltdown moments during the day. If your kids struggle when they are out of routine, Disney World may not be for you, or you just really need to lower the bar. This is where I talk about take a trip by yourself, or take a trip with me. Come find me on Patreon. We will plan a mom's trip. I am so excited. Leave all the kids at home, and we can just plan this trip 
and you can do whatever you want. If you want to go rope drop to fireworks and rope drop to a special event like a Christmas party or not so scary or an after hours event where you are up at the butt crack of dawn and you're not going to bed until midnight, one o'clock. Like, that's great. And if you melt down, I will leave you in the middle of Epcot too because I have done that to my own kids. <laughs> no joke. That was me. But seriously, your kids, if they're used to taking naps, they're not getting naps. They're off their food routine. They're hyped up on sugar because they want everything that they see and you're giving it to them. Really? Really? Come on. I thought I taught you better than that. You're not drinking enough water and you're not taking time to just chill out and slow down. I do have a chill out spaces video for just these moments when you got to take a break, but you don't want to go back to your resort. That's fine. There are lots of great places around Disney World where you can just rest and relax. I will link that video for you right here. And the number two way that you are setting your kids up for failure, you are ruining your vacation, is you've got your expectations way too high. This is exactly what happened in that post that I saw in one of the Disney groups and I couldn't even believe that she wrote it. This is Florida. We just got through a hurricane. A hurricane just came through yesterday. My house, we didn't have power. There's flooding everywhere. Disney is magical, but Disney is not magic. Okay? There is not some bubble around Walt Disney World that keeps all of the bad weather out. Rides will shut down. It happens all the time. But if you are promising your kid, we're going to do this, and 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 then A, B, C, and D don't happen, you've just raised that bar so high that there's nowhere to go but a major meltdown when something gives out. Now, again, on top of the way out of sync with your regular daytime routines and the food and the sugar and not enough water, you've also got the heat that you are more than likely not used to, the storms which you cannot control, and a whole bunch of people. If you or your child, they get a little, you know, a little anxious and the world gets a little too peopley, well, Disney World is going to be a challenge. Just walking in and doing nothing in those parks is going to be a challenge for your child who is not a super fan of people. The crowds and the long lines, I mean, I've said this, I don't understand why people think Disney is just like any other amusement park. Because it's really kind of in its own category. I would say the Orlando Amusement Parks, Universal, and Disney, they're the ones that we've had the most struggles with, with our kids, and the long lines. And waiting in a line that is 60 minutes or 120 minutes, like that's a long time for a kid to be standing. Now there are some things that you can do you can pull up your Play Disney Parks app. You might be able to do Pokemon. I get it. Our kids have to be entertained all the time. Like, we never had that option. If we wanted to ride the ride, we had to stand in line. That's how it is. But make sure your park bag has all of the essentials like snacks and fidget toys. And make sure you refill your water before you get into a long line. I have my park bag videos as well. Link in those right there because you've got to make sure that you are prepared and I don't care if it's December that you come. You want to make sure you've got your protein snacks. You want to make sure that you've got your fidget toys. You want to make sure that you have your water filled up so that when you're waiting in the line, you can hydrate and kind of take a little bit of a break. 
They don't have to always be on the screens. Now, if you have the DAS, if you or your child actually qualify for the new DAS guidelines now, which that's a complete racket, then that's going to help you navigate the parks and try to avoid the meltdowns. If you choose to learn about the new multi-pass lightning lane and you choose to purchase it and use it, then maybe that's a tool that you can use. I'm going to say give that one a few more months. It's not looking pretty right now. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of ranting and raving about this new system that was supposed to be better because you can plan your trip seven days out. And I'm seeing things just completely taken. Like, no availability for lightning lanes. So I don't... I don't think it was actually an improvement over Genie Plus, but they didn't ask me my opinion and they got rid of the majority of the people who were utilizing DAS for valid reasons. You yourself are standing in line and you're waiting the two hours to ride this ride and somebody has a major meltdown or there's some kind of I don't know how to put it, biohazard that happens in the line and the ride has to be shut down. Like, that's going to ruin your trip too. So I don't understand why Disney decided to eliminate all of these other people and say, no, now it's only going to be for cognitive disabilities. I think they're setting themselves up for a whole lot of a whole lot of more problems in the park and it's really unfortunate but if you do get the DAS I do have a video about the DAS I've got a couple of them the DAS has not changed it's just the number of people who were utilizing DAS before so I'll help you any way that I can I also think that my walking around the parks with the map that kind of helps you get a lay of the land it helps me a lot just to kind of get an idea, look at the map and see where things are and what lands have what attractions or shows or whatever. And it just kind of helps me get around. Now, when I'm in the parks, I am usually going the wrong direction. <laughs> and my kids are like, no, mom, it's over here. No, mom, it's that direction. Whatever. Especially Hollywood Studios. I don't know why, but Hollywood Studios is one that I have not been able to wrap my mind around. I think I'm pretty well versed in all of the others. I may miss a few shortcuts because I forget about paths or I don't think about it. I'm, I'm trying to get better at that. You know, it's only been a year and a half, but... <laughs> but Hollywood Studios, I am forever going the wrong direction. <laughs> Under the expectations are too high, I want you to make sure that prior to your vacation, you are checking the updated calendar for park hours. Disney will change your park hours. They will add a special event. They will close a park early. There's just all kinds of things that could happen. Let's say you're buying your tickets, you know, you've got your hotel reserved, you've got your plan in place, you're buying your tickets, and you're six months out. You're not going to know the actual park hours until you're about one or two months out, and even that could change. I was looking for extended evening hours for the deluxe resort guests, and I could only see the the schedule through the first week of October. So when I'm trying to plan my December vacation, I kind of have to go with just the general hours that the parks are normally open. I can see the Jollywood Nights hours. I can see the Very Merry Christmas Party days. So I know those days, but I don't necessarily know like when is Animal Kingdom going to close? in December or are they going to add some kind of special event I'm not gonna know that probably until October I'm not gonna be able to see that time frame so stay on top of it because I don't want you to have this plan in place and then you get here and your plan is all messed up and then you have to pivot but you've got this idea in your head <laughs> And it's not, it's not meshing together. So keep an eye on 
the calendar for the scheduled park hours and understand that they are always subject to change. Let's talk about this thing. I'm going to give mom and grandma the benefit of the doubt that they push their little darling just a little too hard. They set the expectations just a little too high. And when the child was disappointed at the end of the day, she had a full on meltdown. That's what I am choosing to believe. And I'm hoping that with this video, you are able to avoid that in your own family. Because I don't want that to happen. But here's what happened. The little darling was expected to see Tinkerbell fly from the top of Cinderella's castle. Because almost every night after the fireworks, Tinkerbell flies. But guess what, people? This is Florida in the summer. Storms. Normal, it's normal for it to rain here every day around 3 o'clock. Just be prepared for that. Get your poncho in your park bag like I tell you to do in my park bag videos. They close rides all the time. And we have had a lot of extra storms. I'm telling you, it's not going to let up for a while. My family and I went to the Atlantic Ocean. We were over like Jacksonville area. So we were further north in June that water was warm. It was way warmer than it should have been. And my husband and I both looked at each other and were like, oh, this water is too warm. We are going to be in for it this summer. And guess what? Yes, here we are, the beginning of August, and we've already had a hurricane come through. Please do not set your little darlings up for failure and tell them that 100% of the time... Tinkerbell is going to fly because it's not safe for Tinkerbell to fly in the rain or in thunderstorms. It's not safe. And you should know this if you've seen any of the Tinkerbell movies. I don't remember which one it was. I think we own them all. But obviously they're on Disney+. Plus. But there's one I remember where they're trying they're out and they're like come on we gotta go it's getting it's getting ready to storm and you know one more thing one more thing and they're flying and they're trying to dodge the rain the big raindrops because they would ruin her wings but here's what kills me about that whole situation so the darling had a full-on meltdown right there in the middle of magic kingdom at the end of the fireworks what I think appalled me the most, though, is mom and grandma decided that they had to make up for Tinkerbell's shortcomings. And while the child was asleep, after they finally got her to sleep and calmed down, Tinkerbell had to come in and make apologies to this little girl and write her a letter and leave her all kinds of gifts. Here's my suggestion. Especially if you are coming to Walt Disney World in the summer. Make your priorities. Make your top three things in each park. And I know you think, oh, three things? I could go boom, boom, boom and knock that out. No problem. You are wrong. Your expectations are too high. Top three priorities. I have a spreadsheet. I have a Google spreadsheet for you that will help you. I promise it's helpful. The link is in the description box below. Go ahead and request it. I will shoot it right over to you. And remember, I'm going to start going through my Google spreadsheet and we're going to start planning my mom's trip to Disney in December. So hopefully that will help you with your own plans and you just kind of see, I don't know, how I do it. I'm not saying that I've got the best planning idea. This is just how my brain works. But if it works for you, then great. I hope you can utilize it in your planning as well. But if you have three things that are your priorities in each park, then everything else is just icing on the cake. And it's a bonus. And it's that expectation of, okay, we're going to do A, B, and C. And then, oh my gosh, we got to do D, E, and F too. Like, that was a great day. Or man... 
We got so lucky, we got to do A, B, and C. You see the difference? Versus over-promising and then under-delivering. I hope this helped you. I hope you will connect with me. Leave your comments. Did you see that post? Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on my next video.